Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to BC314, a course on media and technology. We've been uh, doing a little bit of uh, learning on digital equipment, just as a way of introduction, giving us an overview of some of the equipment that typically goes into use in church and Christian ministry, just to give us a little familiarity with some of these things. So we're going to continue that today. Let's take a moment to pray, and we'll get started. Could somebody pray with the class, please? We'll start. Okay, somebody? It'd be nice. Somebody pray. Uh, yes, your pastor. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time, Lord Jesus. For this time we again come to you, Father God. And Father God, as we are going through this book, Lord Jesus, Media and Technology, we ask you that, Lord, give us more of your understanding. And as we are learning all the gadgets and things, Father God, help us to learn in a deeper way and a greater way, Father God, so that we could learn how to use all these equipments and gadgets so that by this, Lord Jesus, we can serve you in a better way, Father God. We commit all these classes to your hand, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So we were talking about digital equipment very quickly to review uh, last class, last week. We, we did a little bit about graphic software just kind of introduced some of the things that are available what you can do with the software that you have uh, we talked a little bit about desktop publishing software uh, media presentation software and i just shared with you generally how we go about coordinating these things uh, here at apc uh, we looked a little bit about photography cameras because some, some, you know, at some point people will say, oh, you know, we need to buy some camera for the church or the ministry, and then you'll have to make some decisions. So this information hopefully will help you uh, uh, determining, you know, what would be best for your use. And then we just started uh, last week towards the end of the class to talk about public address system. So we'll pick up from here. So. Uh, uh, this is something again to keep in mind when you are meeting in a in a hall or in an auditorium that um, you know it's not an uh, of course the your your PA system is important but you also need to make sure that the sound the way the sound field is distributed inside the auditorium is something that's useful for all the people who are coming uh, the, it should be audible but it shouldn't be too hard on the on the ears. And so this is where you will tell people to uh, do some sort of a, a sound check across the auditorium. So, uh, and there, there, you know, uh, the, your sound people will do it. Other people that you, whom you're hiring the equipment or buying the equipment, they can do this for you. So typically, you would, uh, you know, when you set up your speakers and your public address system. You'll see, you know, what are the sound levels across the auditorium in various places. And so you'll have receivers put in different points, and then you'll measure the sound level. Or you could do it, you know, you could have receivers in multiple places all across the auditorium. Typically, you should do that all across the auditorium. And you see, you know, what is the dB level, the sound level at all of these points. And uh, then you can see, you know, okay, do we, how do we need to change what's being output through these speakers generally what we don't want to do is we want to keep the sound level at something that's very comfortable which is in the range of 65 to 85 decibels so that's decent level right now you also have to take into account how the sound level would change how the sound field would change you know, you have an empty auditorium when you measure, but you also measure when there are people in, because you know, more people means sound is being going to be absorbed. Uh, 
just the way the people are distributed inside the auditorium. So you also have to look at, okay, how is the sound field affected when you when you have an auditorium full of people? Uh, and then based on that, you, you try to keep it at a level that's comfortable for people between 65 to 85. Uh, decibels. So basically, just just tell your sound people. We tell, you know, hey, just do a check. So we do that from time to time, just to make sure things are okay, right? So keep this in mind. And it's a simple thing. Uh, I mean, if you want to do it in a in a small way, you could just download. And if you go to the uh, Google uh, apps uh, Play Store, uh, you search for sound level meter. You'll find an app that you can put on your phone, and you can use that to. Uh, measure or if you're getting a a, a vendor the vendor a vendor will bring in a, a system that has all of these receivers positioned across the auditorium they collect all the information they measure different things and they can generate uh, a graph like this for you right then you get to know okay uh, it's pretty high in all of these places i need to bring it down so on and so forth okay but just to keep this in mind when you're buying uh, or you're looking at uh, sound inside an auditorium now, when you talk about the public address system, so your public address system is basically is what is going to give you that that sound in the auditorium. Uh, we've got different things that you know we we need to be in uh, be aware of. Uh, we have um, uh, prepackaged PA systems. That means that these these are fully packaged, ready to set up and play. Uh, public address systems. You also need to think about portability versus control you know portability meaning you can move them out uh, move them around in case you're uh, you, you're going you maybe you're doing small events here and there at smaller halls you want a system that you can carry around with you very easily uh, so that's uh, one criteria versus something that gives you more control on what's happening of course that would be something you use in a place and so on so we're going to just talk about all of these things speakers monitor speakers microphones cables and uh, just to give us a little understanding of these things okay i'm not expecting us to memorize all this uh, that's not the point the point is just to hey be aware so that when you are interacting with people who are serving uh, you know you you have a common language you understand what they're saying and you know what to ask for or speak about right we're, we're not trying to make all of us experts in sound that's not the point just to give us a uh, little understanding so typically, what happens, uh, let me just make this a little smaller. Okay. So typically what happens is you have your speakers that are on, uh, on the stage, uh, which are facing the audience. And um, you have a control here, a console that would um, typically a mixer that would you know, mix the sound that comes in from your input. So you'll have a lot of mics on stage, and the input from those mics, they come in here to this console, and then the mixer here, and then from the mixer, it goes out to the speakers. And right now, in this picture, I'm just showing you two. Obviously, there would be more. Uh, we will look at it a little later, but just for simplicity. So all the inputs come here. There's a mixing happening. Then it goes out. If you're doing live stream, uh, and you're doing also presentations inside the auditorium, like you've got your PowerPoint, uh, you've got your LED screens, that's what people use these days, or you have your projectors going up. Um, you would also have, uh, and you're doing your live stream. So what happens, you would also take audio. You take, so you mix the audio for the auditorium so this is called front of house console that means this is mixing the sound for the people inside the auditorium but you mix the sound differently for the people who are online right so there are people who, you know who are example they're watching online uh, live stream the sound for them typically is mixed separately right so all of these inputs these inputs, the raw inputs, are sent out to another console. We call it the broadcast console. And over here, there's another person sitting who will mix the sound here for live stream. Right? That means uh, the people who are, you know, from here it goes out to the live stream. This is a switcher. Uh, they control 
you know what's what shots to send out along with the audio so they do that here uh, now you also have uh, uh, um, uh, you, you can mix either using physical hardware or you can mix using software uh, we'll talk about that a uh, little later and then you have a presenting presenter uh, laptop where here's where you know you can present your lyrics or your PowerPoint and all that and sometimes you also play videos from here so there's an audio output that comes from here goes in and it goes to both places it goes out to the live stream and it also goes back into the auditorium so this that what what you play for example we play video announcements or we play video uh, uh, from the presenter uh, machine and that goes back into the auditorium right so this is the high level schematic of uh, the connections and uh, if you uh, just get get into a little bit more detail some things you need to know is uh, typically now you would have mon uh, speakers that are facing the people on the stage uh, the musicians or the preacher um, we call them stage monitors right nowadays we don't always have to have stage monitors because we have what we call as in-ear monitors we'll, we'll talk about that those are little things that the people put into their ears but generally you'll have stage monitors to give sound to the people on stage so they know how things are sounding and then you'll have speakers that go out to those in the hall um, sometimes you may just have these top level main speakers and uh, the, the speakers have three built-in levels of speakers in them which we will explain uh, in addition to that you'll have what is called a subwoofers there's a lower frequency sound uh, uh, these are subwoofers they kind of fill in lower frequency so keep in mind for the human here we have a range 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz that's a human audio range right 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz so subwoofers give a lower bit lower sound so they're closer to they're somewhere from 220 hertz lower lower sound right uh, now within these main speakers uh, you have within that big box that we call the main speaker typically you'll have three levels uh, of speakers three kinds of speakers or, or actually even four four kinds of speakers that give different range uh, of sound so subwoofers they produce the lowest level lowest range then you have woofer which goes 500 hertz and below mid-range it covers this 200 to 3 kilohertz range of frequencies and the tweeter that it goes up so uh, we don't have to you don't have to memorize this but just keep in mind that within this box this box that you call as a speaker that are actually three or sometimes even four level four kinds of speakers that cover four levels four ranges of frequencies so what has happened the reason i'm explaining that is sometimes you know our sound people will come and say hey the woofer is gone or the tweeter is gone <laughs> like what, what, what's he talking about <laughs> what what they are saying is that these cones inside you know the, the th three or four levels of cones inside typically it's three and so you have an additional fourth outside uh, that one of them in a particular range of frequency has blown it's been damaged for whatever reason so the sound that people hear is a little awkward you know because that range is not filled in they feel a little empty right so you're, you're wondering like hey why is the sound not right why can't you tune it i mean why can't you you know uh, adjust the sound okay that's because you know if in case uh, a particular range uh, speaker's gone the, you know your sound person will say sorry pastor today something happened uh, our subwoofers are gone or you know our uh, tweeters are gone sound is not good you know so you, at least you know what he's talking about is a certain range of frequencies not there doesn't mean people will not hear people will hear but they don't feel it's complete it's something is missing because a certain range 
sound is not coming through in that range, right? So that's what they mean. Uh, so just just for us to understand, and it has happened. You know, uh, they'll use that language and tell you, and uh, so you understand what they say. Okay. Uh, again, when you're buying speakers, uh, you need to know that uh, there are two kinds of speakers: there are active speakers and passive. Active means they have built-in amplifiers with them. So it's easy to carry, it's portable. You just carry one box, you've got the amplifier in it, you just plug it in, you can put the mic in, power it, you're fine, you're ready to go. You don't have to carry another amplifier. But a passive speaker requires another equipment piece called an external amplifier. So typically when you want to use, you know, uh, things for portable things, that you, if in case you're having small meetings here and there or you're having open air meetings, those kinds of things, then it's always good to buy an active speaker, a speaker that has a built-in amplifier, right? So you just carry one box, one speaker box, the amplifier is already in it, it's easy, you can move from place to place. Uh, if you're doing a setup for a, you know, like an auditorium that you're just coming in once a week, then passive speakers are fine because you'll have your external amplifiers and all of that. Um, a full range speaker is a, a cabinet speaker is basically it has all of these four, three or four levels of ranges of frequencies all built into one box. That's how typically you would buy a speaker. Right? The other thing uh, just to mention is typically we could do away with these stage monitors these days because we have what are known as in-ear monitors. So these are little things that people wear in their ears and uh, they have a transmitter and a receiver. The receiver, they, they tuck it on their belt and they plug this into the ear. Um, so people in the worship team typically would wear these in-ear monitors. Now, if you don't have in-ear monitors, then you definitely need to have these stage monitors. Otherwise, they'll, it's very difficult for them to know how they are sounding and how they're all working together. But if you have these in-ear monitors, then it makes it very easy for them. It's also easy on their ears. And each, each person in the worship team can have their sound tailored to them, what they need to hear. Right? They need to hear their own voice, how they are sounding, and maybe they need to hear you know, certain instruments. or it, It's mixed just for them, so they, they, they can you know, sing well. Uh, in times past, now we don't do it these days, but uh, the, you, know, you could have a phone app put on your phone, and you would plug this into your phone and you know, put it in. But nowadays, everybody has their own uh, 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 receiver set, uh, which they put on their belt, and then a transmitter. Right? So they, they, are, they are all uh, tuned for each, each of the people on stage. So it makes it easy for them, and they can work well together. So in case you know, your worship team says, Pastor, we want to buy India monitors, you know what they're saying. You know, they're just saying that they want these things, the transmitter receiver, which they can bring their own headset, listen to their sound so that they can know how they are sounding and they can do well in what, what they are doing. Okay. Uh, so let me pause here. Uh, everyone's good so far? You're following me? Yes, Pastor. Okay. I'll follow. Okay. Right. okay. Um, I know uh, this may not be very, <laughs> uh, what to say, theological, but this is just the practical side of things when you're having a church or ministry. Sorry, Christopher, I see your hand raised. Do you have a comment or a question? Yeah, just a simple question. You you mentioned that uh, the all the uh, different uh, you know, the vocals, the instruments, they they go to a mixer, and the mixer is is basically, uh, uh, I guess, uh, mixing the, the individual sounds and then you know uh, making it uh, as uh, uh, as sounding as as good as possible. So this in your monitor um, is receiving the sound after it goes to the mixer. Is that is that correct? Um, and uh, uh, I guess where yeah. I'm coming from is that when when a person is playing uh, an instrument or, play, or, or singing, um, he may be singing in a certain way, um, and uh, it anyway is going through a mixer, which is which is maybe making some changes. Um, and some 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 ways modulating uh, you know maybe the sound uh, of the vocals or the instrument. So how does that sort of uh, you know kind of sync with uh, 
you know what they what they are what they are actually doing and how what they actually hearing yeah so there is a mixer for uh, so the front of house mixer that is for the sound inside the auditorium and then there is a separate thing that is done for the uh, people on stage for the worship team so that's separate uh, they have their own transmitters and receivers and their own mixing that happens for each individual that's done separately the front of house is done for people inside the auditorium so the person in the front of how uh, you know if, um, uh, who's who's controlling the mixer what's called as a foh front of house mixer he is controlling the sound for the people in the auditorium so that they can all have good sound there's a separate setup for the in-ear monitors which is to tune the sound for the worship people the, the people who are doing the music for each one of them so that they can know how they are sounding uh, along with the rest of the band so they you know uh, and so uh, you know they are they are coordinating among themselves and also uh, you know uh, they also have a director of music so what happens is so basically in in this in that setup the director of music is actually giving all of them instructions which none of that audio comes out into the uh, the people in the auditorium so the director of music is saying okay let's repeat you know stanza one you know so he's giving instructions to all of them so they all hear that um uh uh yeah so tarun is tarun is tarun knows this well they have uh uh input that's specific to them right uh so the director of music is uh uh telling them instructions giving them instructions so all that is happening with these people on stage Tarun, you want to share something more? Uh, yeah, Pastor. In fact, uh, the in ears are very specific to those who are on the stage, and the music director is usually a, a bass guitarist or, a, or an electric mm -hmm. guitar who, who is not a worship leader because they are supposed to give instructions uh, uh, on the stage. So when they are speaking, uh, the drummer will listen to them, the uh, acoustic guitar, the worship leader will listen to them. So they, they will be giving the lead. So that, mm -hmm. that's something very internal, and the audience won't hear it. And mm -hmm. that that goes as an input to all those who are on the stage so that he could uh, lead uh, the worship. And uh, also, every every person who is on the stage would want their in-ears at certain levels. For example, the drummer want to hear only the worship leader so that he can match up his uh, beat with him and not the guitarist much or uh, a, a, an electric guitarist he would want to hear only the worship leader and the drummer so they can adjust the levels like they want uh, so that they can sync up with it uh, they need not hear the same thing that the congregation hears but uh, they have an option to adjust like the way like the way they want individually mm -hmm. right so, Thank you. Uh, so how sorry how, so how does it how is that handled i mean is there a person who is uh, who is handling that mixer um, uh, it, uh, you know for the uh, uh, for the for the worship team is yes, there is it, there a uh, uh, so it is set up initially, even before the congregation was worship starts. Uh, we spend about like half an hour uh, doing the stage setup. Like after the whole setup is finished, like all the cables are connected, the in-ear setup alone uh, happens in a half an hour time period where uh, every person uh, who is on the stage actually asks for what they want and uh, uh, they get that set up so the levels are set up in the mixer so uh, it, it it's kind of uh, previously set up in such a way uh, that they get what they want so 30 minutes is spent like every five minutes with each person on the stage asking for what do you want is everything is okay and then once their levels are set up so it, it's all kind of pre-recorded in the uh, mixer like once that is set up that levels can be stored 
like for example i know that the drummer wants uh, this much from the guitar this level from the worship leader and uh, i i have set that up the mixer actually uh, holds that setup clearly so uh, w- w- um, when the worship is on that setup is kind of like already set uh, mm. it, so he 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 gets what he wants so uh, 30 minutes is separately spent only for uh, setting this up thank you thank you tarun you got it yeah so like tarun was saying um uh, you know they go through the setup uh and in fact in our modern mixers as these things can be stored so your settings can be it's almost like pre-programmed you kind of set it up and week after week you can just turn it on and it's it at a certain level everything is set you turn it on and then of course you fine tune it you know because there are different people leading worship or in the worship team you can fine tune that and also in the auditorium for that if you need to fine tune you can fine tune but uh, a lot of this is stored in the mixer itself pre-programmed is that correct tar yes pastor it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's pre-programmed yeah. uh, we we know for which person what and we just uh, uh, like press the button and uh, that levels will all show up for that person yeah thank you thank you so tarun was actually heading up our sound and setup team here in bangalore for a long time <laughs> so he knows this uh, in and out very well okay yeah so um let's go back to this thing All right so okay uh, any other questions so far on on this oh Okay. Uh let's move forward. We just talk a little bit about mics. Uh just to keep in mind there are uh, you know different kinds of mics, right? So generally we say uh there are um uh, dynamic and condenser mics. Um uh, you would use these condenser mics, you know, near drum kits and so, uh, so on, and you would use these dynamic mics for on stage purposes. and also when you're using these mics we need to know that there are what are known as unidirectional mics typically you use it for um vocals for speaking so on unidirectional as opposed to omnidirectional the picking up sound from all all directions so especially when you are uh, example if you're a preacher you're holding a mic uh you know your mic most likely would be a unidirectional mic uh uh so that uh, you have to hold it properly in front of where you're speaking right so sometimes you can see people they hold their mic way down they're speaking you know they're speaking at a certain height the mic is down it's not picking up sufficiently or they're holding it to the side well a unidirectional mic is not designed to pick up sound from all directions it has to be in the line you know for it to get maximum voice uh sound input it has to be in the line of your voice right so you have to hold the mic properly this simple thing but it does uh, help the sound person because if you hold the mic properly you know that reduces a lot of their effort that okay you know uh you you're speaking into the mic your voice is going into the mic and then they can amplify it correctly right so of course these days we have wireless microphones we have uh, microphones you can put around your head uh on your face and or you know handheld so 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 many different options are there but i think the most important thing as pastors and preachers be mindful that most of the mics that we use for preaching speaking are unidirectional so they have to be held properly and uh, so on if your people ask you oh we need to buy mics for our you know musicians especially these uh uh drummers uh those are you know playing on cymbals and those kinds of instruments then you need a condenser mic so that can capture sound at, at different levels uh or uh omnidirectional mics uh for for those kinds of use uh whereas for speaking and singing you typically use unidirectional mics um so generally sound that is picked up in the microphone goes out to a mixer and uh, then you might 
you know, have an equalizer and amplifier. So they work on the sound, they refine the quality of the sound, and they send them off to speakers. So whether they are speakers that go to the audience, or they, these are speakers that go to the, uh, this goes to the uh, people on stage, or to the in-ears on stage, right? Uh, additionally, you could have uh, effects done, uh, but typically you have these things all packaged in one box uh, called a mixer. So again, uh, a mixer, this is just a simple picture. That you've got all a wide range of mixers, but you've got your inputs coming in, and this is where you can adjust the sound. You can uh, work on the quality of the sound over the frequencies or the sound levels, amplify them correctly, and so on. And this is this is a basic small uh, mixer, uh, 12 channels. Uh, and you, you've got huge mixers if you have a lot more people on stage or things on stage that are giving out sounds, you buy uh, bigger mixers. But typically, I mean, this is just a small one. Right. And so uh, this is important. So at some point, you, you know, your church or your ministry uh, would have to buy a mixer, uh, especially after you go beyond, say, three, four people on stage. You definitely, definitely need a good mixer so that the sound, you know, especially when you have instruments, different instruments coming in, singers coming in, you have to put all their uh, sound together in a, you know, and and put it out to the audience. So of course, all of these things are taken care of by an audio engineer. Um, they, they understand all this and they would do this for uh, for you, okay? So uh, in terms of just knowing what, what is done to the sound, uh, the equalizer balances out uh, the different frequencies so that, uh, you know, uh, what is heard uh, is good, clear, uh, they they can mix the different frequencies coming in. Obviously, people are speaking at different frequencies. You've got instruments giving out sound in different frequencies. All of these have to be put together, and those frequencies are tuned so that this final sound is good. So that's done with this equalizer. And then uh, there are ways to work with these sounds uh, that you can split these sounds again all of these things will be taken care of by our uh, sound person who's handling it and they can work with these sounds uh, split this range of frequencies and send them out to various speakers or in in your uh, pa system so that's called crossover and speaker management they will handle that for you Again, this is a little just general information about cables. You know, if people come and say, Pastor, we need to buy XLR cables. You know, they're talking about these type of cables. Uh, if they say they want TRS cables. You know, they're talking about this. Uh, it's Again, there's not something to uh, memorize, but just to know, you know, because they may use this language. Pastor, we need these kind of cables. So you know that, okay, this is what they're referring to. Uh, and so, okay, yeah, and sure, you know, you go ahead and buy them. And this is where, you know, uh, a snake cable. So basically, a snake cable is they've got a lot of these cables nicely bundled into, uh, you know, a uh, 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 nice big cable. And then it comes out, so the inputs and the outputs. So this whole thing is called a snake cable. Right. So I didn't know this, and you know, when the first time we had to buy this, uh, I, I had to tell them, you know, tell me what is a snake cable, and then they explained this to me. So I understood. So generally, uh, you would need a snake cable when you have multiple wired systems coming in and outputs going out. Right. So you'll need that. Of course, there are a lot of wireless things happening as well. So uh, wherever possible, we can go with wireless mics and so on. But there will always be some amount of uh, wired uh, inputs and outputs for which uh, generally they will ask you to buy a snake cable. And this is what they're referring to, right? There are other areas that you can go and uh, uh, look at and uh, get more information. So that's a quick uh, run through on 
audio PA system. Uh, any questions? Like, uh, let's say, let me just look at the chat here. Tarun said, uh, in your channels, a separate output channels from the monitor output channels. Say, preference the channels required to mix. Okay. So, uh, what Tarun is clarifying for us is the outputs that goes to the India's uh, monitors, those outputs are separate from the outputs that go into the uh, house speakers, right? So you can manage them separately, store their settings separately. Roshan's question, for a home recording like podcast, what mixers would be good? Um, uh, again, I haven't done this myself, uh, but maybe I can suggest is to even use software. Um, um, so you don't have to buy a physical mixer. If it's just a PA system, uh, you know, you've, uh, or so you have a multi channel, like maybe two, three people sitting around coming in. You could probably use a software as your uh, equalizer and mixer. Um, Starun, you have a, any thoughts on that, on Roshan's uh, question? Uh, yeah, Pastor, I think the choice of mixer is actually based on the need of the type, number of channels that you need, like how many mics you have, how many instruments you have. So what? how many in input channels and how many output channels that uh, determines the choice of mixer that you buy. For a home podcast, you might just need like one channel to input and uh, mix. So a basic one would do. And then you have analog and digital. Uh, with digital makes it much more easier to manage. Uh, so, you, you, and it's little expensive than the analog. But there are like wide range of choices, and software is definitely a good option. There are quite a few apps which enable you to do that. If you get a good mic and uh, connect to a good app, uh, it it should enable you to uh, do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So Roshan, if it's you know like if it's a home-based thing, if you're doing just recording at home with your laptop, uh, most likely you could do your mixing within your software. Uh, uh, and like Tarun was saying, it just depends on how many more inputs you have uh, in in your home recording. Um, is there somebody having a question? Yeah, go ahead, Roshan. Pastor, which softwares would be good for the podcast recording? Um, so, uh, I'm not getting the name of it. Uh, sorry, I'm not getting the name. Theron? Audio mixing. What's it called? Um, <laughs> I, I, I remember Jeff mm. has suggested some for uh, me mm. when I tried. I'm just checking mm. my okay, Russian. I, I don't don't know offhand. We'll look it up and let you know. Um, audio mixing. I see these guys using it all the time uh, in church. I'll I'll find out and let you know. Okay. Thanks, Buster. Yeah. All right, Elisha. For an average church of 500 congregation, how much in USD should be budgeted for sound? Mm, okay, so let me see. Let me convert from Indian rupees. So,
Okay. Sorry, I think I uh, I lost connection between. I hope this right. This is still recording. Yeah. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Okay. Um, so, Elisha, um, um, yeah, it, it, it depends on, you know, like uh, how much you want to spend. Because, say, example, um, the mics, right, uh, the microphones, you, you have a wide range of microphones that you could buy. And um, um, uh, so, so, so there, there are uh, there are a lot of uh, variations in terms of uh, mics and so. Example: in India, India monitors. Do you want to use India monitors, or do you not want to use India monitors? So, for a long time, uh, we were functioning without India monitors. So our worship team just had those stage monitors. We didn't buy India monitors for you know our our, our worship people until much later. Uh, but then you know things were they were still able to lead worship and serve and all of that. So um, there is uh, there is a you know a, a lot of options. But I, I would just I would say generally, and I'm, I just did a quick you know. Um, uh, estimate, um, say around five thousand. Yeah, so around maybe five thousand US dollars uh, for for a, a decent setup. You know, so your your uh, so in Indian rupees it would be like four hundred thousand Indian rupees. Uh, uh, so a decent mixer uh, mics and all of that so in that range um again this is just an approximation uh and over time of course we've spent uh, more or uh, in 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 buying all of these things but for for that kind of a audience congregation size something in this range uh but there are like i said there are variations you can choose from in terms of the mics and the different parts of the PA system. Okay. Uh, so Taruna shared. Um, okay. Thanks, Alicia. Taruna shared. Um, okay. Uh, in short, and uh, Dolby. So he shared these two, the names of these these two apps that you could try out. Um, what were the other questions that were on the chat after Elisha's question? I kind of I lost it because I lost connection. Could you type your questions again? I'm not sure who put the questions. Um, I noticed there were some questions after Elisha's question, so I've lost them in my chat. Okay. Yeah, feel free to ask um, uh, additional questions if you have any. So let's move to the next section. Oh, OK, so the question was um, wireless versus wired mics, any difference in quality? So to my understanding, I, in times past, there, there was very obvious dis difference. Uh, people preferred wired mics uh, because of quality. Uh, but I think now our wireless microphones have uh, improved significantly. So um, I don't think there's you know, um, uh, uh, any degradation in sound quality using wireless mics. They are just... Um, uh, uh, I would say the wireless obviously are much easier to to work uh, to work with for the people using sound, uh, but in terms of quality, I think they're pretty much on par with each other. Uh, Tarun says wired uh, is faster than wireless, but delay can be adjusted. The sound delay. But I think in terms of quality and things, what we experience, the end experience is 
pretty much fine. But wireless are uh, a little bit more expensive for obvious reasons. Uh, so that's just a thought to keep in mind uh, when you're buying wireless mics. Yeah. Cost. All right. Good, good questions. So let's just now shift over to video production. So this is, we're getting into video production. Just again, this is just general information. So you will either have video production as in having your team create videos, uh, or you'd have live video production, which is live streaming your event, right? So we'll talk about both. Now, this initial part handles uh, video production as in creating a video. Uh, so typically we use video for our Sunday announcements. So, you know, um, in the early days, we used to have a physical person come up, a person come up and do the announcements. Um, uh, then there were, you know, that is nice, but then there were, you know, we, we can't, uh, we have to give them, you know, exactly what needs to be said. And, um, uh, you know, it will take 15 minutes maybe, for, you know, to actually go through all of that. So um, somewhere along our journey, we decided that our announcements would be done on video. Uh, so basically, we can finish all our announcements in five minutes. Sometimes it very rarely it'd go on to seven minutes. But generally, in five minutes, we can you know finish our announcements, just play it. And of course, it can be very visual. There's audio, video, text coming up. So um, all of those things we can do if you want to. So uh, doing our announcements on video, we changed to that uh, quite some time back. Um, we can do promotional videos to promote events, um, you know, reports of events, uh, mission trips, so on. Uh, we could do uh, testimonials and so on, uh, short films, mo movies, music videos, so on. So all of this would uh, involve what we refer to as video production. So in your video production, basically, uh, it goes to three stages. So your people who are working on the video production typically will talk about pre-production, production, post-production. Post so uh, Pre-production is basically planning for the whole thing, what you're going to shoot, right? So you have a pre-production. That's where you, as a pastor, will be involved. It's okay, you know, we want to know what you know, what exactly you're trying to achieve, who are going to be the people involved, uh, and uh, what kind of a set would be best suited for what you're going to record. So you you need to give your input so that your team can plan this pre-production. They will want to know the script. Uh, you know, what exactly is going to happen, uh, what is the set that will suit, uh, what is going to be shot, uh, who are the people who are going to participate, the cast, and of course, they will bring in the crew for the audio video. So pre-production. So once that is done, um, uh, then comes the actual production, which is the shooting, the actual place and time when what needs to be recorded is recorded. The sound, the video, all of that, scene by scene, is being recorded. That's the production. The post-production is they bring all the raw footage and the people who do all the video editing. They sit down. They merge everything. They put the whole video together, right? So all of this takes time. And uh, as... as uh, uh, you know, as a pastor, as 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 a leader, uh, they will need your involvement uh, in, in various stages, right? Uh, that, so you understand, you know, what they, what they need, your team, your video production team, what they need. You give them the inputs and what they need for post production. Uh, you provide them the inputs and so on. So, for example, let me just take two minutes and uh, and I'll finish. So, for example, we do video recording of our daily devotional, right? So that means uh, there's a short video that we put out, a five-minute video that we put out as part of our daily devotional. But all of these are recorded, you know, at least one month or more in advance. Uh, 
So how does it happen? So there's one person, uh, uh, Samuel, who's in charge of our video production. So he'll plan. Now, for every week, we have one theme. So one pastor will record for one full week. That means seven episodes. So he will plan, you know. Okay, so and so pastor, you're going to record, uh, you know, on this particular date, we're going to record, say, maybe three weeks or four weeks of devotions that you're going to do. And that means you have to do 21 or 28 episodes. Right? But we tell him in advance, okay, this week, this theme. Second week, two, this theme. Week three, this theme. So he plans it out. And so he will. they will go, they will set up. So we record it in an apartment where uh, if they set up, they do the background, they set up the, they arrange the set, what the background should look like. Uh, generally, it might be a living room setting. Uh, sometimes it could change depending if you're doing something for Christmas or Easter or some other thing, the set would match, you know, what you're recording on. And then, uh, you know, so you come and they you do the recording. That means you look in the cameras, they'll have all the cameras set up, come and do the recording. That's the production that happens. Then after for post-production, you have to send the send the video to the video production team your sermon notes, right? That means this is what you want that episode, the heading, the title for that episode, the scriptures that you've used. Um, so that when they're doing that video uh, for that devotional, uh, they make sure that you know that episode has that correct title, the correct scriptures, of course, and everything. They they put each each of those each episode for that week. They put it together. So there's a coordination that needs to happen between you, uh, between the pastor who's doing the recording, and uh, the video production team. So for the production, there will usually be um, about four people. Uh, one is the you know director who sets up all the set. Yeah. Then there is uh, two people helping with the camera and the lighting, and there's one person doing the audio recording. Right. So four people are recording. You one person. This is just a simple. I'm talking about a daily devotional recording. Right. It's very simple. So there's one pastor speaking, but there are four people doing all of this, making sure the recording happens properly. So on. Okay. Uh, we'll continue this tomorrow. Um, and I've gone over by a few minutes. Uh, any questions? All right, Abraham's question. How about translation or interpretation? Uh, any idea? Um, so Abraham, are you, are you talking about live translation? Or uh, I, I'm not sure what the question is. Yes, Pastor. I wanted to know if the interpreter standing uh, on the stage is better than the interpreter being behind the stage, like using earpiece or something to uh, interpret for the people to listen. And then also when it goes to the video production tool, how do you fix that interpretation into that video production? Okay, okay. So, um, so these are two different, we handle them two different ways. So one, if you're having a live audience, you're speaking to a live audience, uh, it really depends. If it's only one language, then yeah, it makes sense to have your interpreter right next to you. So you know uh, the and 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 your example English and Vietnamese maybe, right? Another language. Yeah. So then it's good that both are on stage. The congregation is listening and they can see the actions and movements of both the English speaker and the Vietnamese interpreter. That's good if that's what you're doing. But if you're doing more than one language, and that means people have headsets, you have people in the congregation are having headsets to receive it in, you know, Vietnamese and uh, I don't know what other languages are, Indonesia, Pasa Indonesia, in uh, Malay, in, you know, Chinese, I don't know. So about four or five different languages all in the same group, then they're on headsets. Then, of course, these interpreters will be in a separate room where they will be doing live interpretation and it's transmitted in to the receivers uh, for these people. So that makes sense when you're having multiple languages to have them all off stage 
to do live interpretation and they each one receives it in their own language so that's one scenario the translation of a recorded video is what we call as a dubbing that is done usually using you know um, the voice of the english speaker is replaced with the recorded voice of the interpreter so it's that video but the voice is dubbed so that is done offline right so basically the process and we do that to for our english to hindi videos what happens is uh, we sent the we send the english video to the person who's going to do the dubbing uh, they listen to it they manually transcribe the whole thing and they actually record the voice and then they put the voice on the video of course everything has to be timed right so that whole video has now uh, the same speaker but a different vo voice in a different language so that's a different process that is done separately uh, what i do want to mention is nowadays because of um, uh, uh, software technology um, uh, natural language processing dubbing can actually be done through software for major languages uh, so for all the world's major languages so you can go from english to french you can go from english to german or you know major languages you can dub you can actually do it through software and the software can also be trained uh, because sometimes it'll make some mistakes uh, especially example religious broadcasting so you train it and you can actually drive it through software we are looking into it uh, but that'll really save us a lot of time and effort if we begin to use that okay basta thank you so much that's awesome okay okay so uh, we'll continue this tomorrow let's uh, close for today could somebody pray and dismiss us please So we could pray and send us. Go ahead, Asha. Dear God, thank you, Lord, once again for this class, Lord, that we have for the program of obedient technology, Lord, that you are such a good father to us and help us to understand. Lord, thank you for helping us to understand the natural ways of life and how people work out with technologies. Thank you so much for Pastor Ashish and for my brothers and sisters that they'll continue, Lord, that they'll continue to reach out to me through the gadgets you have given me. Our vow, Lord, that they'll have a wonderful weekend and celebrate you as their best friend of the rest of life, God, that they surrender to you. Thank you, Jesus, for this class. We pray. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good weekend. Enjoy your time. Well, oh, we have class tomorrow, so we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye now.